Okay, I'm going to explain a technique that is called bi-value universal gray plus one. Uh, it's got a kind of a long, crazy name, but uh, in a nutshell, what you're looking for is a board where you have every remaining cell has a pair of numbers in it and you're left with one other cell on the board that has more than two numbers. So if you look at this board here you can see every single cell, if you start down here and you work your way around, every cell that remains has a pair of numbers. Two numbers per cell, that's it. And then here you notice there's a cell that has three numbers in it, it doesn't have a pair. Now one thing you want to know about this um, this would be the first thing you'd look for, okay? So you're going to look for a, a board where you get to this point, and if you don't know what to do from this point, then you're going to look at your pairs and see if there's one cell that stands out as not being a pair. That's the first thing you're going to do. Then what you're going to do to determine if this is actually indeed a bug plus one situation is you're going to look at your your number of pairs here and the logic, I hope I can explain this um, in a way that makes sense, but what you're going to do is like, let's take this bottom row. There's three cells remaining in it and if you notice out of these six total numbers that are left, six possible numbers, so you got an 8, 9, a 1, 8, and a 1, 9. If you notice out of these three cells you have two ones, two eights, and two nines. So not only do you have three pairs of numbers in these remaining cells, but you have three pairs of numbers that are accounted for as well. So let's do the same thing with this next row up. If you look at this row, it's got five cells instead of three. But again, the, the same thing is going to ring true here. If you look, starting with the one is your first number. There's a one and a one, there's a two and a two, a three and a three, an eight and an eight, and a nine and a nine. So all of those pairs of numbers are accounted for. There's not like three of, of one kind or anything like that. If you look at the next row up, you're going to see the same thing again. You're going to see a one and a one, a three and a three, a five and a five, an 8 and an 8, and a 9 and a 9. So all those numbers are accounted for. This one's an easy one, obviously. You just got two 4s and two 9s. And you can do the same thing. We're going to ignore this row right now because this is the one where our uh, one cell exists that has three numbers instead of two. But again, if you go down this column now, if you look, you have a 3 and a 3, a 4 and a 4, an 8 and an 8, and a 9 and a 9. So that column has a pair of each number that's left. <clears throat> this column's an easy one. It's got an 8 and a 9 and an 8 and a 9. So you got a pair of numbers there. This column, you have a 1 and a 1, a 2 and a 2, a 5 and a 5, and an 8 and an 8. So this column looks good. This column here, simple, 1 and a 2. So you got those pair of numbers accounted for. We're going to skip this column again because the triplet exists in this column, so we're going to hold off on that one. Now we got this column, 1 and a 3, that's an easy one to account for. And in this column you have a 1 and a 9, that's an easy one to account for. So now we're going to focus on this last column and this last row. And what we're looking for is the same scenario. We're looking for if we were to eliminate one number from this cell would we be left with a pair of numbers and the rest of these cells and have them all accounted for the same way, ver same way that we verified all these other ones so if I look here I can see I already have two threes so this would be an extra three so let's just for the sake right now of working through the logic let's say that we would remove this 3. So if we did that, we would be left with a 3 and a 3, a 4 and a 4, 
a 5 and a 5, and a 9 and a 9. So if we removed a 3, that would actually work for this column. Same thing with this row here. We have a 1 and a 1. We have a 3 and a 3, 2 and a 2. But we don't have a 4 and a 4 and a 5 and a 5. We already have two 3's accounted for, so we could do the same thing again. We could eliminate the 3 and then we would be left with a 1 and a 1, a 2 and a 2, a 3 and a 3, a 4 and a 4, and a 5 and a 5. So removing that 3 would would actually give us the same scenario we're seeing with all the rest of these rows and columns. But here's the, the weird part. Because removing that 3 would create that same scenario, it would also create a puzzle that's unsolvable. It, if you were doing this on paper, you could actually remove that possibility of a 3, but you'd be screwing yourself. The puzzle would not be solvable after that. And in fact, in this game I'm playing right now, in this um, program I'm using, if I try removing the 3, it's not going to let me. If I try excluding it, it won't work because it's an invalid move. What we actually want to do here is this is indeed a bug plus one, a by value universal grave plus one situation that we're in. So what we want to do is actually put a three in this cell and then that will fix the situation that we were in and it actually unlocked the rest of the puzzle. Because now we could go through and everything just instantly gets narrowed down to a single number in each cell. So the puzzle is solved. Now I'm going to show you another video right after this. Um, check the link in the description and I'll show you a situation where you could fall into the same scenario of thinking that you're in a bug plus one but it's actually not a bug plus one.